I, I really enjoyed my time at Aer Lingus. And what, what, what people don't remember, um, on, it was probably my first day as CEO in Aer Lingus, I received a letter from the Minister for Transport who instructed me to engage in a process to sell the airline. I, I was actually told by the minister, the shareholder, to uh, you know, make whatever uh, arrangements were necessary to sell the airline. And uh, I remember talking to Tom Mulcahy, who was the chairman, and I said to him, this is, this is mad. You know, now is the worst time in the world to try and sell the airline because all people will be interested in buying are some of the assets that have value. Uh, you know, Heathrow slots, for example. Um, so, uh, you know, I suppose it started a, uh, a train uh, that I refused the instruction of the minister to, to do that. And, you know, my argument was, we'll turn the airline around, it'll become more successful, and then we'll sell the airline, because the airline will have value and, and we'll have something to sell. Uh, so, you know, when people say I got frustrated, I didn't really, uh, you know, the instruction that I received from government was to sell the airline. When we got into a position where we had something to sell, they decided that they didn't want to sell. Uh, so, you know, in my view, uh, you know, I'd done everything I'd been asked to do. I spent 25 years in Erlingus and had a great time. But it, it was time for me to move on because uh, I think I was becoming, certainly in government circles, probably a problem rather than a, uh, an asset. So um, I, di I didn't want to do that. And uh, I left not knowing what to do. And Stephen will tell you, you know, I think Stephen and I went out for a drink on the Friday at, I left and uh, I got uh, approached by BA shortly after that and uh, you know the, the rest uh, as they say is history. Mm -hmm.